Hello everybody, R.S. Jafar today here to work with you on a quick flash uh, RPG game. We played some Zelda and everybody enjoyed it quite a bit and I think it's a really great example of how you can use ActionScript to create a basic RPG game. So with these next few lessons I'm going to go over the basics on how you can animate your sprites and uh, make the uh, scenes move around and do a lot of other cool things and uh, we'll just keep building on it incrementally as we move on and add more and more layers and levels to your game. So, so far uh, for the next few videos what we're going to do is we're going to have a game. Give us a second to load and this is by the way this is not the best way to program this it's pretty uh, memory intensive the way we've, we're going to approach it, but it's uh, the simplest way to approach it. And over time, we'll learn better ways to uh, make things a little bit better. So anyways, here we have our link character. You can walk around left, right, up and down. So we're going to do that. You'll notice that when he walks, he is animated. And when he stops, he stops animating. He also stays facing that same direction when he is walking. So when he's going up, he stays facing up, left and right. Uh, so far, we've programmed him to be able to walk into this cave. None of the uh, barriers work yet, so he can walk anywhere. This is just a picture. When he walks over here to the cave, he goes inside the cave. We have the flames animating, and we have the old man with his sword. But again, nothing's happening just yet. He just can walk around, and he gets trapped here. He can't do anything. So how do we do that? Well, to start out, you're going to need to create a new document in Flash. We're going to do uh, Action Script 2.0. And we're going to first start off by setting up our stage. Our background size is going to be 550 by 450. And uh, for now, we'll leave the background color as white. And I'm just leaving the frame rate at 20. That should be fine for this, for this project. And here we have our stage. It's going to be almost a complete square. I'm going to import in all the required things into our library, but we're going to do it one at a time so that it's uh, easily understandable. You can get these sprites from my teacher's page to create the project. I'm going to start off by going to File, Import, and we're going to go to Import to Library. And to begin, we're just going to uh, animate our link character. So I'm going to import in Link Normal Back, Front, and Left. Notice that I am holding control to select all three at the same time. Once I've done that, I can click open and all three will get imported to my library. I can find my library by going here to library and I'll notice that there are nine items here, even though I only imported in three things. The reason for this is each of those GIFs had two images within them. Uh, for example, Link Back also included a bitmap of Link walking with his left leg forward. You can see his right leg is forward here and then his left leg is forward here. I'm going to rename these so that they're easier for me to keep track of. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click here on this bitmap and change it to link normal back. This is not uh, mandatory at all, but it can help you stay organized. So that way it sticks together. I'm going to go ahead and copy the name here and paste it in for bitmap 4. Your numbers might be slightly different than mine. You can just Check, use the preview to help you figure out which one's which. So that's going to be link normal front two because that's the second image. And then last but not least, we're going to do the left for link walking left. You'll notice that we don't have right. The reason we don't have right is because we can just flip over left to have right. Now we have these three symbols. These three symbols are basically, for example, the symbol symbol one that I have here is basically link back and link back to combined. So if I go here to symbol and I click the play button, you can see that it's an animation of link walking. We're going to go ahead and rename these. I like to put MC at the beginning so that all my MCs stay together in the library. So I'm just going to write link, uh, excuse me, I'm going to write MC link back. And we're going to do the same thing for the other two. MC link front and MC link left. It doesn't really matter what I name it here. The library name does ha has, excuse me, I misspelled that. The uh, library name has no impact on what you're doing in the game. It won't affect anything in the uh, programming at all. 
but it's nice for you to know how your objects are organized in your library and try to keep these as organized as possible. Later on, I'm going to make folders to keep everything even more organized. All right, so the next thing we need to do is if, if I was to drag these movie clips over onto my stage right now, just to check them out, let's see what they do. So drag them over right onto the stage. Uh, there's only one frame and one layer at this time. Let's go ahead and run it and check out what we have. And you can see it's the animation of my sprites just walking there. Let's go ahead and delete these guys. What we're going to do is we're going to create a movie clip that has these three movie clips in it. And each frame of the movie clip will have a separate link facing a separate direction. How do we do that? Well, the first step is to create a, a new movie clip. You can do so by going up to the top here by clicking Insert and New Symbol. The shortcut is Control F8 for those of you who are interested. I'm going to call this link All. Uh, and, oh, I forgot the MC, so let's stay consistent. MC Link All. It's going to be a movie clip, so make sure that that is selected. And we're going to click OK. You might have this screen here. You can ignore all the stuff and just leave it as basic. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And here, if you look at the top left, we have a slight change. Before, it only said Scene 1 at the top left. But now it says Scene 1, and to the right of it, it says MC Link All. That means we are inside the movie clip MC Link All. This is important, so pay attention to where you are. In the center, you'll notice we have a crosshair. And on our timeline, we have a layer with nothing in it currently. We're going to start off by dragging over Link Front, the MC, the movie clip, because we want an animation of him walking. I'm going to click him and drag him over. I'm going to line up his, uh, the uh, crosshairs together. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in by hitting Control Plus. And I'm just going to drag it so that link is lined up with the crosshair there, just so we're consistent. I use the nudge tools by clicking, uh, excuse, excuse me, pressing the up, down, left, and right arrow keys. I use the selection tool to move link around. That's the tool you use to move your objects or your instances of your objects. So there we have it. On frame one, I have a link uh, animation, the movie clip of link uh, in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to frame number two now. I'm going to insert, right click, insert a blank keyframe, and go over to the right here for my library and drag, drag over link facing the back. I'll click him and drag him, drop him once again, and use the nudge tool to line it up. And there we go. He's lined up. We're going to insert another blank keyframe by right clicking the keyframe and going to insert uh, blank keyframe once more. Again, remember, right now we are in MC Link All. All of this is happening within the movie clip uh, of MC Link All. We drag over Link Left, drop them again, line them up correctly. And for the uh, movie clip of Link facing the right, I'm not going to insert a blank keyframe this time. I'm going to go ahead and insert a regular keyframe. When I insert a regular keyframe, what happens is we get a duplicate of the frame from before. So frame four, three and four are the exact same thing. The only exception is I'm going to flip this link on frame four to face the right. To do that, I'm just going to go up to Modify, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. And that will face link to the right. So if I play this right now, you can see that it's front, le back, left, and right. We're also going to label each of these frames for future reference. That way, later on, when I ask the computer to go and show Link facing the front, it'll just look for that frame. If I label this one Link facing back, it'll go to this frame and show him facing the back. So let's label them first. I'm going to go to the Properties, and you should have Label and then the name. It might be collapsed, so you may have to just click this arrow to have it open up. Also, if you don't have that, it probably just means you have to actually select the frame. So make sure you click the frame first. Over here on the right, we're going to type in link facing front. Notice that I capitalized the F and for facing and the F for front. While the first word is lowercase, there are no spaces. I'm humpbacking the letters so that 
uh, everything is consistent. You don't have to do that, uh, but it's nice to keep everything consistent so you can keep track of your frame labels and your instance names easier. Now we're going to go down and notice that there is a little flag on the uh, frame, on the keyframe. I'm going to go to frame 2. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Now I haven't been putting any spaces. The reason for that is you don't want to have spaces inside your label names, again, because it's you want to keep everything consistent and they can cause problems. So here I'm going to write in link facing back with a capital F and a capital B. Pressing enter and we're going to go to the next frame. Click there, it's a left click. Go over here to my frame label and we're going to type in link Oops, link, facing, left, all one word, capital F, capital L. And last but not least, I click on frame four. I'm going to go over here to the right and type in link, facing, right. Let's go back to our stage. I'm going to go over here and click on scene one. And this returns us back to our stage. Now, if I was to go to my library, drag over link uh, all, as soon as I plus enter, I'm going to have a rotating link. He's just going to spin around like crazy. The reason for this is I have to have a stop command that asks link to stay in one frame. To do that, we're going to go ahead and go to our layers and do a little bit of organization first. I'm going to double click where it says layer one and call this sprites. This is just to stay organized. It's not mandatory, but I would definitely do it. I'm going to create a new layer by clicking the new layer button, which is like a little piece of paper. Double click on layer two and type in actions. This is where I'm going to type all my actions. Again, it's not mandatory, but it's wise to keep everything organized. To open up your actions, you can either go to window and select actions, or I can just press F9 on my keyboard to do the 